In today's fast-paced world, where found footage and paranormal videos are, for lack of better words, in abundance, it's nice to know that sometimes you don't have to look too far for something both unsettling and completely natural. Toroidal rings are created when a region of fluid or air spins on an imaginary axis that creates a closed off ring. It's the same principle that you can see in action whenever you blow a smoke ring. And although in the right state of mind I could probably see myself watching this for hours on end, and I have. It'd be a lot freakier to see it happen naturally in nature, while coming up with some weird conspiracy theories to go along with them. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Today on Campfire Top 5s. Now, I'll admit, when I started putting this list together, I struggled with the notion of how to make rings spooky. But boy, was I wrong. See, that eerie tingle you're about to feel in the back of your neck isn't going to come from, oh, look, a smoke ring, but rather where it comes from. Now, I don't know about you, but I've seen volcanoes do like two things. They either explode or don't explode. So watching this phenomenon take place is honestly mind-blowing. Not much is known about this original uploader, and if you guys could find anything else about it, please let me know. SeaWorld parks are no stranger to being in the spotlight. And for once, I'm glad to say that this time is for good reasons. Researchers in charge of the Florida-based aquatic animal park were both shocked and mesmerized when the dolphins in their enclosures began to demonstrate just how brilliant and brainy our mammal cousins are. It really is fascinating watching just how masterfully they handle these rings. Is it simply a way for them to amuse themselves? Or does it, like many things in nature, stand for a warning? The humpback whale is one of the larger whale species on the planet, with adults ranging from lengths of 40 to 52 feet in length and weighing around 25 to 30 metric tons. In other words, this is one big boy, and scientifically speaking, far removed genetically from our last entry. Which makes what the whale is about to do in this next clip a lot more concerning. Check it out. Just like with dolphins, it appears that whales have also somehow obtained the knowledge of the vortex bubble, and there was nothing I could find online or in the original clip that would suggest this is done for a survival factor. In fact, I haven't been able to find any kind of footage demonstrating whales from a different time doing this. So is this a cute parlor trick? Or perhaps something more?
Now don't let these past two examples fool ya. Some other aquatic creatures have also become very adept at creating these circles, as seen here by the Baluma whales. Now, I can't be the only one that's weirded out by the uncanny valley of it all. These three creatures, unrelated, are in pretty good relation to human beings, choosing only to show themselves socially when humans are around. So, if I were to create a conspiracy theory, it'd probably go something like this. What if these circles are a warning about something else? I thought about what circles meant and where they appeared naturally in nature. Now, I wasn't able to find any footage from creatures in the past doing any of these bubbles, but of course that could also be attributed to the lack of undersea equipment to film it. But whatever the case, Earth is the biggest and arguably the most important circle that matters to any human being. And maybe that seems like a big leap. Circles could just be circles. And maybe I'm making too much of it for the sake of coming up with a conspiracy. But I'll leave you with this, my number one submission. We've seen circles appear everywhere from the earth, to plants, and even intelligent animals. But what if the earth itself created this loop when it was hurting? What I'm about to show you is a clip that was filmed in 1957. It depicts five scientists standing at the base of an atomic bomb. They were testing an air-to-air -air rocket when the nuclear missile detonated 10,000 feet above their heads. Now I want you to watch this closely. And when you find the ring, I want you to also note its color. Now you tell me, is my conspiracy really that off? Minus one the airplane is up. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. There it goes. There it goes. The rocket is gone. We felt a heat pulse, a very bright light, a fireball. It is red. The sky looks black about it. It is boiling above us there. It is rapidly losing its color. There is the ground wave. It is over, folks. It will happen. The mounds are vibrating. It is tremendous. Directly above our heads. It worked. It worked. Oh, ah. Good, good. And there is a huge firewall. The mounds are still echoing through here. Wasn't that a perfect, perfect shot? My only regrets right now are, there's Colonel Bruce, that everybody couldn't have been out here at Ground Zero with us. Okay, Bodie. We can still see it's a very odd cloud. Uh, it is white in the center, and there's a bright orange ring towards the outside of it. Then below it, there's like a hazy cloud. Uh, I don't know, Colonel Bruce, I've never quite seen a cloud like this from atomic detonation. Have you? Oh, I haven't, Bodie. There seems to be quite a uh, halo connected with it, and uh, there's quite a bit of mist up there. I'm not, uh, this is new to me. Thanks again for watching this week's Campfire Top 5. I want to get back into doing these because it was a lot of fun, and honestly, the fact that some of you guys tune into this blows my mind. Share my video, share this one, share all of them. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and I believe I'm also on Twitter. <laughs> Thanks guys, this has been Alpha Bean for Campfire Stories. See you next week.